So Thomas, you uh, you want to play in the PGA Championship? I do, yes. Uh, I don't know if any of our viewers know, but I actually have been working really hard on becoming a Class A PGA mm -hmm. professional. I'm going to be elected this Monday, August the, the 2nd, 2021, into becoming a Class A PGA professional. I've gone through the PGM program. But my goal essentially is to educate myself more as I work in the golf industry full time as a club fitter, as an instructor, mm -hmm. uh, as a content creator as well. You know, I work in the industry, I don't travel chasing mini tours anymore, but I still have a very, very high, you know, I like to play a lot. I, yeah. I, I, have, a, I have a high expectation of myself to compete mm -hmm. well, and one of the advantages of being a PGA, mem PGA member is we have a chance to qualify for the PGA Championship. Good. Oh, he was running after it. He ran after it. He got there before the ball did. I don't believe it. How about that? I'm not sitting do that. Just brilliant. It's a gentleman's game. Yeah, yeah, because there's uh, the P is at the PGA National Championship. Um, so kind of walk me through, you know, what would have to happen, and, and then you know how from now until you know the PGA Championship going to play in. How are you? How are you going to take the steps to get there? Got it. Yeah. So just be, so I just came elected August second mm -hmm. here this year. We in Minnesota, we have the uh, Minnesota Club Pro Championship. Okay. It's at Stone Ridge uh, Golf Club. Uh, it's 24th to 25th of August this this year. Okay. So the what I've got to do is I got to finish top eight in that. Okay. Um, I've been playing pretty well this year. I think I'm actually just sneaking ahead in the in number one in the money list on the Minnesota section without being being able to play in every single thing. Mm -hmm. um, but my goal is to definitely finish top eight in that. Okay. You no, know, I do have higher goals. I want. I want to win it. Of oh, course. Yeah. I want to win everything. Who, who doesn't? Oh, right? I, I know you well enough um, to know you're you get competitive with this stuff. Yeah. So, um, but the route essentially is I have to finish top eight in the local qualifier. Okay. okay. And then I got to finish top twenty in the uh, in the national qualifier essentially. Okay. I finished top twenty in the national club pro championship. I am in. You're in the PJ so, championship. In the, in the okay. Championship. And it's kind of exciting. And in, in Minnesota this year, we actually had. A guy that qualified for the PJ Championship, and he finished like seventh or eighth in the National Club Pro Championship. Okay. It was the first year in a few years in Minnesota that someone's qualified. So, and this will be the first yeah. time you've been able to have sort of this path, right? Because of right. Be, now being a Class A member of the PGA. It so. is yes. So I'm excited to one now that I'm actually a PGA mm -hmm. Class A PGA professional. I've been working very hard the last three years to try and get my portfolio taken care of, but uh, I I like to compete still. Yeah. And. I would love to play in a major. Yeah, so we're actually going to create a series here. You're going to follow me as a golfer, not really as a club fitter, but actually as a, as a golfer, mm -hmm. as I'm still trying to achieve my dreams as a professional golfer out here competing. And we're going to talk about club fitting. We're going to talk about instruction, what I'm working on, mm -hmm. what I'm working on with my instructor, myself. But you go straight back. Uh, we'll talk about fitness. You know, I have goals especially over the winter time to try and prepare for that National Club Pro Championship and that would be in April to really get my game dialed in. Mm -hmm. So winter time for me is going to be where I'm going to put in a lot of hard work yep. and uh, I am excited to take our viewers on a unique process as I try and become an even better golfer but also I want to qualify for a major. Yeah, it'll be kind of an inside look at how and also a cool thing I'm looking forward to is sort of how the way you balance everything out between instruction and fitting and your your own family life and right. all of that together and while also chasing your dream here. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah, work life balance is, you know, I've actually have a newborn as well. So I've I've got mm -hmm. a 7 week year old uh, young one, so I've made, made my wife are very excited to welcome our first child to our family. So, fitting in, in that as well, and it's the golf industry is very challenging. Yeah. We work a lot of hard hours, especially in Minnesota in the win, in the in the summertime. Uh, Everybody we, wants to get their golf in the summer, right? Golf in, so we just got to creates a golf, lot of chaos. Golf, golf. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's uh, work life balance it can be challenging, and especially I like to compete still, so I play a lot of pro ams still. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my wife doesn't see me too much sometimes. <laughs> I think I definitely hear get an earful at times, you know. But my dream, I, I want to be a you know professional golfer. I want to make it to a higher level, and we're going to bring you along that. 
process. So we're out on the, out on the golf course here. Mm -hmm. uh, we can play a couple of holes. We'll kind of talk about the, the process yeah. and, and what this series is going to entail. Looks pretty good. It's drawn back. Very good. Very putt. So, so Thomas, you know, you compete professionally. Um, do you have like, you know, a swing coach, for example, or are you, I mean, being a being an instructor yourself, you, do you instruct yourself or do you have a coach you go to? I do not. Uh, I do not coach myself. I do look at my swing um, regularly, yeah. but I do have an instructor. His name's uh, John Means. He okay. actually uh, helps out with second swing quite a bit as, as well. He does. And, um, he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. I've been working with him probably the last four or five years. Okay. I, uh, I came to him after, um, you know, I was struggling with my game a little bit when I was playing professionally and I was, I was hitting these fades. Yeah. So I was hitting the slices. Well, notice how my uh, golf swing's changed. It has. I uh, yes. no longer really slice the ball. You don't. I don't think I've ever seen you slice the ball. You maybe hooked it a little bit, but yep. you certainly changed from the, the fade to more of a, I know draw is your kind of preferred shot now and it's pretty consistent in your bag, so. Right. Yep. Uh, and I'm, I only weigh 165 pounds. I'm 5'9". But, you know, when we do all this content together, you know, mm -hmm. I hit the ball pretty, pretty far from mm -hmm. my size. So that's because I draw the ball. That's because I made some really good swing changes. That's good. And then, you know, especially with, we talk about the super speed training in the off season and stuff, and that certainly helped you gain some of that club speed. And I, I know you always like to talk about how you're not the biggest guy that you're going to play against out there on these, whether it's Minnesota PJ section, or whether it comes up to trying to qualify for the PJ championship. Yep. But you get, you're, you're able to keep up with the speed training you're doing now and also working with uh, John Means as well. It's, and clearly it's working for you. Yeah, and I think what we'll do part of this series is we'll we'll actually uh, get John on on the on the channel and oh, that'd be awesome. Um, we'll do some uh, maybe we'll take you through what we're working on in a in a practice session. So I think that would be really really good to see. And then I'll also explain to our viewers what I'm working on on my own to mm -hmm. try and improve my game as well. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Well, uh, putting's actually been kind of a weakness for me. I made a nice putt there for the <laughs> which of course is great, but it's definitely been one of the weaknesses for me. And I've been playing around a little bit of arm lock putter. Mm -hmm. uh, went back to a shorter putter, just wanted to give something else in, in my hands for a change. Yeah. So part of this process too is I probably will go for another putter fitting, and then we'll probably talk about what drills that I need to work on on my game. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest challenge with my putting is I have such high expectations. I mean, I've noticed I, that. I know even in like when we're testing clubs and you, you know, you, you miss hit a shot just ever so slightly, you're like, you kind of frustrated with yourself. And I get that because being a perfectionist is really a way of, of um, you know, becoming one of the greats in golf, you know. Yep. But interesting. I'm, I'm excited about the seeing your putting, you know, approach because I know you've gone to arm lock, you've gone away from arm lock now. So I'm curious about that too. And it's, it's you know, regardless of what method I've used, it's been starting line. It's been trying to find a way to read the greens a little yeah. bit better as well. I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would say that's probably the big, biggest weakness in my game. Mm -hmm. It's not so much putting in general, it's just making the right choices on the sure. green. And then my speed gets off a little bit and then leave myself three, four footers. And right. it just, it's just a grind. So yeah. I have a lot of rounds where I have 33, 34 putts around. And I'll shoot one under. All of, all of that is a lot, I hit a lot of greens too, but I know for me to be, you know, a better golfer, I need to putt a lot better. Yeah. So that's definitely one thing I'm going to be definitely grinding on part of, as part of the series. Mm -hmm. Right down the middle. That's pretty darn good. Now this is definitely be one of my strengths. Oh yeah. Yeah. I noticed that. I mean, when we do our driver comparisons and you're always striping the ball, that's always, it's never been a thing that concerns you at least has never concerned me about your game to do doing this, but I do want to let people know, like you as a player in the Minnesota PGA section, you have built kind of a pretty strong reputation for yourself. You've had, you've won some titles. I think was it the Minnesota Assistance PGA Match Play, back to back years. Yep. And uh, actually, this year now you're you're no longer qualified for it because of becoming a Class A pro. Right. I and have you were to, on track, uh, right? To, I was on to, track to, to uh, you know win the three P on that. So yep. You've you've built yourself kind of this strong reputation, and you're one of the stronger players in the Minnesota PGA section. 
So there's really no reason that you can't kind of take that to the next level then. Right. Yeah, no, I've, uh, even this year, I think I've won five Pro-Ams this year. Okay. Won a couple of the bigger ones, so that's why I'm up there on, on the money list. Um, I, you know, part of this, uh, this series and just part of me wanting to become a better golfer is I've shown a little bit of inconsistency this year. Mm -hmm. I think that's just a little bit fatherhood, life, you know, yeah. you know I, I haven't had the time to practice. Yeah. With the work-life balance is, you know, I, I work, I play in pro-ams, and I'm at home helping yeah. my wife out with our, with our, our newborn. Well, born. and the way that, you know, our seasons kind of work here at Second Swing, we know, especially in Minnesota, so the fitting season, in a way, it gets, it gets really popular kind of February to March into basically springtime as yep. people get ready to play golf in the summer. And then for you, the way the time things worked out with the birth of your child in June there, so you kind of had some, you know, scheduling difficulty there with busy fittings plus, you know, becoming a father and that kind of, you know, maybe made things difficult for you mm -hmm. um, in terms of putting together a, a schedule in the summer to compete. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge and my scores have shown. I mean, I've shot some really good sc scores. When we're at the U of M Les Ballstead here, and I, even just fr three weeks ago, I shot 62, which is right. the course record out here. Mm -hmm. But then, follow that up five days ago, five days later, and I, uh, I shot 81. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's kind of everything and all in between. I shoot a lot of 66s, but then there's the occasional round where I kind of have that blow up, yeah. and I can't afford to have that, especially when I want to perform my, my best. Mm -hmm. So I'm really committed to really improving my game. I think the last couple years, you know, I got into a bit of a habit of just, you know, in, enjoying the fact that, yeah, I'm, I'm talented. Yeah. And have used my talent to get me by. Yeah. But to take it to that next level, I really need to commit a mm -hmm. little bit more. And uh, for sure, I've got some some things in the works here. I'm actually uh, currently working on a garage build at my house um, where I'm going to be have a place to practice in the winter time. Oh wow! So uh, that's nice because you know you can it, t it can be a long drive a bit in Minnesota in the winter if you don't have something near you where right. you can get some practice in and you know maybe see a launch monitor get some numbers that way. And then also with with COVID this last couple of years, like I just I haven't really been able to. Work. I do a little practice at work, but mm -hmm. like outside of my work hours. But it'll be nice just to have a place where I right. can know I can go practice mm -hmm. whenever I want to. Yeah. And then uh, maybe I can fit the one hour, two hours in, and maybe have my young one in with there with me. Oh, and yeah. Turn her into a very good golfer as well. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. But yes, driving's definitely my strong point here. Um, they almost drove the green here out, you know, into that wind. So we got yeah, a that was, short pitch I was going to say, this is probably, what is it, 330 yards. We're into a pretty decent breeze in your green side. So. Yep. Let's see if we can make another birdie. Oh wow, look at that touch. Just need to be on camera all the time. Allow me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, that's a good thing if you're gonna be on camera during this, this series while you're trying to qualify, because, yeah. No, but. Well, it's always been interesting. Like, I, whenever we've been playing with you out here, when we're shooting content, I seem to always kind of play well. You do. Yeah, so. See, almost, I mean, we did the, uh, the four club challenge, and you were, you know, a couple shots away from breaking 30 on nine holes. Which right. Was, would have been really cool to see. With that ugly five on the last hole. That's right. <laughs> Cash. Another birdie. Yes, yeah, so, you know, with me being a, a pretty solid player and knowing the opportunities that still arrive as becoming a Class A member, mm -hmm. um, one of them actually is if you win the National Club Pro, you get seven PJ Tour starts. Wow. So not only do I want to finish top 20, but I really would love to try and win it. Yeah. I mean, if my game's on, no doubt I can uh, definitely contend. Yeah. I got to get the uh, mental part of my game a little bit right, but also uh, the physical part too. Yeah. So we talk about um, strength training a little bit, body mobility. We've done a little bit of uh, golf forever stuff, mm -hmm. but I, I really don't work out. <laughs> uh, my golf is kind of like a workout for me. And yeah. I don't have really much muscle on me, <laughs> um, so I really am excited to also bring along the journey here. Um, my physical trainer, Jeremiah Hales, um, he uh, helped me when I was on the U of M okay. golf team. Uh, he was part of the, the U of M golf team's physical training, and he said he would you know, love to help me 
trying to get my body back in shape, whether that be strength, whether it be mobility. Yeah. Probably more mobility there than anything, but um, I'm excited because we just walked up the short little hill and I'm kind of puffing <laughs> a little bit, so. A little bit of a wake up call? A little bit of a wake up call. <laughs> I mean, we're probably shooting this video on one of the hottest days this in is, Minnesota. It is near 100 degrees out here. Near so. 100 degrees and I'm wearing pants and everything like that, <laughs> but. Uh, Hey, that's the that's the PGA Tour event. You're though. playing. PGA Championship. It's you not just one pants. round, and I've won a lot of one-day events this year. Mm -hmm. But hey, I missed the cut at the Minnesota State Open, and that was definitely a wake-up call for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's money right there. That is perfect. Mental game. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a huge part of the, of the game. Um, so I'm gonna have to go through some mental practicing myself because. Mm -hmm. Let's just face it, some of the stuff that I say, tell myself on the golf course when I'm playing, that we probably couldn't be on camera right now. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I'll admit it, I can be a little bit of a head case on, on the golf course. And I think that just comes with having such high expectations of myself. Yeah. Um, I don't think you're alone there. I mean, now I have very little competitive golf experience compared to you, but I've, I've certainly felt that where, you know, you get excited about a tournament, you're going into it and you, you think about, you know, you kind of get ahead of yourself and think about, oh, it'd be cool to win this or cool to, you know, finish this way. But, um, and then, you know, it doesn't happen and it can kind of be frustrating. I mean, golf is, a, hey, mentally, it's one of the toughest games to master out there. It is. And I don't think people realize really how hard golf is. Like, I, I also teach over here at the U of M Les Ballstad and um, it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge trying to teach beginners to get that first move to catch the ground coming yeah. through. And then you can just see how excited they are about hitting good golf shot. Yeah. And I don't think I get excited enough about the good shots and I get frustrated about the bad shots. We were just talking, I don't even think I know how to club twirl. No, I'm a so. big fan of a good club twirl. Uh, right. Now I know how to do it because I'm at the level of my golf life, I suppose, where I'm not playing competitively and I'll just mess around with my friends and do a club twirl when I hit a good shot. But it'd be, you know, that's just, it's a, it's a way, it's a sign of like confidence and like, I don't want to say cockiness, but it's a way to, um, you know, that you're, you, you love what you see in the shot. And um, now it'd be great to see you one day in the PJ Championship fire off a club twirl, you know, when you, <laughs> you stuff an approach shot. Or even just like a fist pump. Like uh, the fist pumps for me are even, even awkward as well. Mm -hmm. So getting excited about it, I think I've just got to give myself, you know, realize my ex expectations are high. Yeah. But just enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. And I think my wife even tells me when she watches sometimes, she's like, you just don't like, like you're, you're just going fun. through the motions. Like you're not having as much fun. This game is fun. You're out outside, you're mm -hmm. playing for a living. You're doing something you love to, love to do. And whether right. that is part of me trying to find a sports psychologist or it's just maybe reading a couple more books. I started reading Zen Golf. So I was trying to find my own Zen. Yeah. Um, I just got to find a way to keep myself in the moment and yeah. enjoy being on the golf course. All right, I was trying to find where your ball is. I smoked that, but where is that golf ball? So talking about distance, but sometimes it can be a disadvantage. Well, what we thought was yards. down the middle, but you just hit it, you know, like 30 yards farther than we thought. Right. Yeah, so this would be a good, you know, chance to kind of talk about me getting kind of frustrated. I hit the greatest shot that I've probably hit drive-wise. That was, like you said, this is the farthest drive you ever hit on this hole, and we thought it was perfect off the tee, and now you're, you got trees in the way. Yeah, golf's not a game of perfect. That's what I got to tell myself. I can tell my students that, but the hardest thing is being yeah. my, own, my own shrink here. But it brings a challenge to hit another good shot from under the trees. Wow. Oh that my goodness sakes. Good. What a shot. I didn't think that was going to get all the way up the hill at first because that's yeah, a steep hill. Yeah, it kept hill, going. But putting for eagle. Putting for eagle. I don't think I've ever seen driver, what was that, a punch like seven iron? Punch seven iron, yeah. Driver punch seven iron from 112 yards <laughs> on a par five. I don't think I've seen that before. Yeah, well, we got the wind behind us here. Yeah. And it's dry. We haven't had much rain in Minnesota. But yeah, I mean, I do have all the golf shots. I got to remind that's myself very, that. That's very clear. As I, in, the, in the little I've played with you, and in you know even just a little bit of this, you know these few holes that we're walking, I've seen you know you, you've got the capability to go low. You've seen it in scores and performance in the Minnesota PGA section. You've got the game 100. percent You know, it's just now I think I think you're talking about the mental part. And that's probably the next step in, in 
Yep. Taking it to the next level, I guess. I think the mental part is just a little bit to do with commitment too. And I talk about green reading being maybe one of my weaknesses. I just got to find a way to have a good solid routine and just commit to the line that I've read. Yeah. And put a good speed on it. If you don't make the putt, move on mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I think I get just a little bit frustrated. Once again, expectations there. Ugh. Ooh. Right there, it was a good putt. Can't, uh, <coughs> can't get mad at missing mm -hmm. that one. Well, three birdies and three, three holes. Three under and three holes. If that's a sign to come, I think this will be a fun series. <laughs> but yeah. no, I'm, I'm excited about this because it'll be fun to follow along and, and get sort of the, 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 the whole look at you know, Thomas Campbell. and the, cause I, know, I know the fitter and the player a little bit, but I don't know everything else and the balancing everything out and then working with John Means, working on other aspects of your game. So I'm excited to see how this all unfolds and I'm, cert I'm certainly going to be rooting for you and I think a lot of our viewers will too. Yeah, I'm excited to just be able to put the time in yeah. and actually get my game back in, in the shape that I need it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you know, life kind of gets in, in the way a little bit, but I only live once. Yeah. So I, you got to dream big, you got to dream big. And it's not even so much about just trying to make it to the, the PJ Championship. I, you know, I'm a talented golfer. I just got to remind myself that. Yeah. I got to dream bigger than just trying to make the cut. You know, I would love to contend in a major. Oh, I, you have the game for it. I believe that. So uh, uh, from me to you, but also from, I think, all of our viewers to you, good luck. And I'm excited to follow along here.